configuring Citrix printing. If you've had any history with Citrix Presentation Server or Citrix Metaframe back in the old days, you're probably familiar that Citrix printing has always been kind of a rough spot. It's always been a little difficult to get configured, and that's because there are a lot of different ways that you can connect a printer into your Citrix infrastructure. You can you can connect it in via the client. You can have a local connection to your to your Citrix server itself, or you can do network printing, which is what most of us do. And it's because of these numerous types of printing capabilities and all of the different driver sets associated associated with printing that sometimes cause a lot of issues. And so learning and, and, and properly configuring Citrix printing in your infrastructure is very, very critical. It's also a very important part of the exam as well. We're going to talk about the different types of printing associated with Citrix. We're going to talk about how to import network print servers and move drivers around from your network print servers into your Citrix infrastructure. We're going to talk very specifically about management of those drivers and management of those printers and the different options that you can select to make sure that your drivers get copied, get replicated from Citrix server to Citrix server in the most appropriate way possible and so that you don't end up with conflicts. A lot of times printer drivers can cause blue screens and if you don't properly manage how those drivers get moved so that the uh, a Windows 2000 driver works on a Windows 2000 box and a Windows 2003 driver does the same for a 2003 box, that's a very important part, part of Citrix printing. So we're going to talk about both of those as well. We're going to discuss policies and specific policies to printing, and we're also going to discuss the Citrix Universal Print Driver. So we're all on the same page when it comes to the printing vocabulary. I've put together this little graphic. And you'll notice here I've cheated. I've actually imported in some little printer icons. They're really hard to draw, printers are. But what I have here is a workstation that's connected to a printer. I have a print server that's connected to three different printers. That's a, a network print server somewhere on my network. And then I also have a Citrix server that has a directly attached printer to it. And this is to illustrate the different ways that printers can be connected into our Citrix infrastructure. Now, a, a client printer, the definition of a client printer actually depends on what platform you're talking about. If you're talking about a DOS-based or a Windows CE-based um, device, a client printer is actually one that is physically attached to that device. There aren't many of these DOS-based and CE client devices out there unless you're running thin clients. But for the most part, essentially, if you have a directly connected printer in that, in, in, with DOS and CE client devices, that's considered a client printer. For everybody else, for Windows NT and 2000 and Windows XP, any device, any printer that is set up inside of Windows is a client printer. So whether it's this locally connected one or anywhere on the network, any, any printer that is connected into this device is considered a client printer. A network printer is any printer that a client connects to, say, over the network. You'll see I have a little switch here, so all of these three devices are connected together over the network. This workstation connects to this print server and then also to the printers on this print server. In that case, the workstations has network printers which are hosted off of this print server. In the same vein, here over in the Citrix box, this Citrix box is a locally connected printer also, and that would be considered, if it's shared out over the network, a network printer. A local printer is one that, obviously, as much as it sounds, is directly connected. The local printer in this workstation is the one that's connected via the parallel cable or the USB cable here. The same thing with the Citrix printer over here. Those are the different ways that you can handle printing inside of your environment. And depending on where the printer is coming from, you'll actually handle the installation of the drivers in, in different ways. If, if the printer is connected into a print server, we would actually import the print drivers or import the print server into the Citrix farm. If the Citrix server has a directly attached printer, then we want to install the driver locally onto the Citrix server. Even more exciting, if we've got workstations that have client printers, then we have to make sure that the workstation client printers are available also on the Citrix server as well, so that we can print through the Citrix server. The first printing we want to talk about is the idea of having a print server that serves up printers from across the network. Let's look at this now. If we open up the uh, Citrix Presentation Server console and we go to the Printer Management tab, you'll see we have three different tabs here, one for contents, one for network print servers, and one for bandwidth. The one we're interested in here is network print servers. If I right-click inside of the white space here, we have the option to choose Import Network Print Server. Let's do that now. This gives us the option to select a network print server that's outside the farm. Let's say you have a print server somewhere in your network that handles 100 print servers across, or 100 printers across your network. If we type in the name of that print server, in my case it's DC Nugget, if we type in the name of that print server and then we give it a password with which to connect to that print server, then we'll actually 
import in that print server into our Citrix farm. You'll see that the DC Nugget print server has now been updated and it has a last updated time of this. Now, any clients that connect into my Citrix infrastructure will be able to use the printers hosted off of DC Nugget natively. If I click here on the printers node, you'll see that this DC Nugget server actually hosts two printers, this Brother 8840DN printer and this HPLJ9050 printer. So these two printers are available to clients where they may not normally have access to them because of where they may be physically or where they may be on the network, they now will be able to use the, printer, the printers off of this print server. Going back to my, uh, my graphic here, if my workstation happens to be in a location that may not be in close network proximity or maybe not even the same um, um, network location as my print server, by doing this, this workstation can now make use of the printers on this print server. But let's say that's not the mechanism by which I want my clients to connect to my printers. Let's say instead I want my print drivers actually to be hosted on my Citrix server. I may not necessarily connect the printer to my Citrix server, but I want the drivers to be available on the Citrix server so that my, my clients can print through directly to the Citrix server. Let's do this now. I'm going to minimize everything here, and you'll notice that I've downloaded a file. This is the driver file for a particular type of printer. It's the, uh, the Brother 8840DN print driver, if you care. But we're going to double click this and go through the driver installation function just like we would if we were installing this on a print server. We unzip the files, then we go to the file location, we verify that the files are there. Okay, our files have downloaded just like we say. We go, we start, we go to printers and faxes, we add a printer. And the printer we want to add is a local printer attached to this computer. This is the process you will use every time you add a new print driver to your Citrix server. We'll connect to a standard TCP IP port because this is a, a network printer located elsewhere on the network. We'll choose next. We'll type in the, uh, the IP address for the, uh, that printer where it's located at to create an IP port. We successfully connect to it. And then the next thing we have to do is point to the drivers that we just installed. I paste in the location of where those drivers are, and it points me to this Brother PCL5E driver. I've now created a printer port for this printer name on my Citrix server. I can share it out potentially if I want. I can call it uh, Brother Printer. I click Next. It gives me the error message about MS-DOS workstations because the, the length of this share name is too long. We don't have any MS-DOS workstations, so we don't care. I click Yes. I might say the location for this is on the third floor. So I've now created a, an LPT port, a, a, a printer port for this Citrix server. It's going to copy the files into its location where those files are stored. And as soon as this copy completes, we'll be able to look inside of the Citrix management console to see that those drivers have updated. I'm going to pause while we wait for it to uh, complete. Let's go back to the management console. If I go back to the management console, you'll see now that this brother printer that we've created now has CTX Nugget 1, which is the server that it was installed on, as its server, which is different than the DC Nugget that we talked about before, the, the, the external print server. I can see that the driver is the brother PCL5E driver, and the platform is Windows Server 2003. If we go under the Drivers tab, you'll now see that I have this brother PCL5E driver listed in my series of drivers. Now, what are all these drivers? We haven't really talked about this tab yet. Default with the installation of Citrix come a few native drivers. This Citrix Universal Printer Driver, this color LaserJet 4500, the LaserJet PS, LaserJet Series 2, et cetera, et cetera. These are the drivers that come default with Citrix. We'll talk about the Universal Printer Driver here in a bit, but this Brother PCL5E driver is the driver that we've just installed. Now you'll notice that if I click on it here, this selected driver has been installed on my server called CTX Nugget 1. If I have 150 Citrix servers in my environment, it's probably going to be a kind of a pain in the neck actually to get these drivers transferred from printer to from server to server. And so luckily Citrix has provided a very easy way for me to migrate drivers around from Citrix server to Citrix server. Let's see how this is done now. The first thing we want to do to replicate this driver from CTX Nugget 1 to CTX Nugget 2 is choose the server where the driver may be located here. You'll notice that server is set to any. This gives us the list of all the drivers that are currently installed inside our Citrix farm, all servers and all drivers. You'll get a warning actually if you try to replicate the drivers using the any because 
if you may have multiple different types of servers in your Citrix farm. Remember how we talked before about how Windows 2000 and Windows 2003 have different types of drivers and installing one on the other can sometimes cause some really poor, some really bad performance or blue screens? You don't want to do that. And so this warning message comes up that says, hey, you've selected any as a replication source. This operation is potentially dangerous. So the first thing we want to do is make sure we choose the place where the driver is located. In this case, it's CTX Nugget 1. Now that we've done that, we can replicate this driver from CTX Nugget 1 to CTX Nugget 2 by right-clicking and choosing Replicate Drivers. A new box appears and says, okay, do we want to replicate to all the servers on the same platform and add to the auto-replication list? Or do we just want to choose the servers in which to copy the driver information? It's very important difference between these two. By choosing the second one, we will do a one-time copy of this driver from CTX Nugget 1 on Windows Server 2003 to CTX Nugget 2. If we choose the top one, we'll actually replicate this driver from CTX Nugget 1 to all the servers that are Windows Server 2003 and add them to the auto-replication list. And we'll, we'll show you the auto-replication list here in a second, but what that is is it says, okay, at, at any point, if any additional Windows Server 2003 boxes appear on our network, just give them those drivers automatically. Now, I probably want to do this because I want to make this printer available to my users from every single Citrix server. So I'll choose this. We can choose to override any existing drivers if we want as well, and we click OK. Now you'll see that the replication operation has been queued. The, the, driver, uh, the driver migration actually can take a lot of resources on that Citrix server. For, so the Citrix server will wait until an appropriate time to to, to move that driver from one server to the other. Once the driver is complete, we can, or once this process is complete, we can right click and choose to refresh the drivers. And once the, the Citrix server has completed queuing up that, uh, that driver migration, CTX Nugget 2 will appear in this list of, of, uh, of installed servers. We talked about auto replication. If we right click again on drivers and we choose the auto replication tab, you'll see now that this brother PCL5E driver is on the auto replication list. It sources CTX Nugget 1 and it's selected to overwrite. We can additionally add new drivers, drivers if we want to this auto replication list by choosing the add command and saying, okay, well, I want to add the color LaserJet 4500 to my auto replication list if I want. This means that any time an additional server comes online, that it will automatically get the drivers that we want it to get, based on what platform it is. This network only has Windows Server 2003, or this farm only has Windows Server 2003 installed in it, but if we have Windows Server 2000 or Longhorn or whatever installed in here, this would, would, would populate with the various platforms. You know, we keep harping on this fact that printer drivers cause problems with uh, MetaFrame servers, and it's, it's true, actually. The, if, you, if you try to put the wrong kind of driver in the wrong kind of server, you can cause some major problems. There is a way for you to help prevent that from happening. If we right-click on the Driver tab again and we choose this Compatibility uh, selection here, we have the option of adding in specific drivers and selecting how we want our clients to use or not use those drivers. If we choose a server platform here, say Windows Server 2003, we can say all the drivers in this list are the only drivers that are allowed to be used on Windows Server 2003. In the same vein, we can negate that and say any driver is, is available for Windows Server 2003 except those in this list. So if, for example, we add in a driver and we know that oh, the, uh, the Microsoft Office Document Image Writer driver has a problem with 2003, we can say, okay, well, all drivers are going to be okay. We're okay with pretty much all the drivers that are coming in, except for this one. Do not allow this one to run on a Server 2003 MetaFrame server. Lastly is the concept of driver mapping. There are a lot of different drivers out there, and the drivers may not necessarily have the same name, or there may be two different uh, printers that may be able to use the same driver. If we want to try to reduce the number of drivers on our Citrix server, we can choose this driver mapping option that says, okay, for any particular client or server driver that's out there, for example, let's say uh, this brother PCL5E driver. If a client connects into my window or to my um, uh, MetaFrame farm and has a driver installed on that client, I want to say if that driver's name is, oh, I don't know, let's call it a Bob's Printer Driver. If a client comes in that has Bob's printer driver installed, well, really, we want them to use the Brother PCL5E driver. 
and this is done by the name of the driver. In the same vein, I don't know, it's uh, maybe Jane has a printer driver too that she's wrote herself. We can go in and say, okay, well, Jane's printer driver, even though she wants to use her printer driver, actually go ahead and use this brother PCL5E driver as well. So for those different named drivers, we can map them into the drivers that we have currently installed on our servers. This is the concept of driver mapping. Now, why is all of this important? If you remember a few nuggets ago, we talked about this Citrix connection configuration here on the MetaFrame toolbar. This is the tool that allows us to add and subtract uh, different things, different channels out of the ICA stream. If we double click on the ICA TCP connection and choose the client settings, you'll see that we have configured here to connect client printers at logon. Going back here to our little graphic that we showed before, this is to say that if this client printer has a connection to a network printer, and you attempt to connect this client through to your Citrix server, well, we want those default network printers to be available inside of the Citrix session as well. We're, we're, we're passing through those connections from the client workstation into the Citrix box. And by default, when that happens, in order for that to happen properly, we also have to upload the drivers for those client printers as well. So if we're allowing client printers to be connected at logon, then the users can potentially upload some drivers that are pretty bad. So we have to make sure that those drivers are, are, are properly managed. And this is why printing has been so difficult with Citrix, because the idea of allowing these, these clients to add their printer drivers makes it convenient for the clients so that no matter what printer they may happen to be connected to out in the world, they'll still be able to connect to it through their Citrix session. But it also can make it a bit of a nightmare for you as the Citrix admin to make sure that the proper drivers are always installed on your Citrix server. So it's probably going through your mind at this point. If, if I've got clients that can send their drivers to my server, and if I've got network print servers that can connect to my server, and if I've got locally attached printers to my Citrix server, and if I can install drivers but not have locally attached printers, there's, there's, there's all kinds of different options which, which I can get these drivers on my server, and you're telling me the drivers are potentially bad and can sometimes have blue screening problems. Well, how do I manage all of this? Well. That all goes back to the concept of Citrix policies. It, everything always goes back to policies. Policies allow us to control this behavior, to control the installation of this driver behavior. And it, to, to, to enable a Citrix policy, we do it just like we did before. We, we right-click on Citrix policies, and we create a new policy, and this time we'll call it printer policy. And then we right click on the printer policy and choose properties and we get to view actually what are the options available to us in this printer policy. Now I'm just going to expand the items here under printing so we can take a look at them. So let's go through and look at each of these settings that we can do for printing policy. Under client printers we have five different options we can select. The first is auto creation. Under auto creation, if we enable this policy, it gives us the option for how we want to auto create our client printers. Do we want all of our client printers to auto create whenever they log in? Do we want just the, the local client printers, the ones that are connected directly into the client? Or, or do we want just the, the default printer for the client? We might just want to choose just the default printer because connecting all of these client printers can increase the amount of time it takes to log in or, or increase the amount of resources it takes for each client that tries to connect to our Citrix server. In some cases, we may not be interested in client printers. We'll say, okay, well, don't auto-create client printers at all. Under legacy client printers, legacy client printers are specific to if you, if you have any of these, these needs for legacy client printers. You probably won't need them. To create printers that are private to each user session and use standard Windows terminal services naming conventions, you would use this create dynamic session private client printers. If you want to create printers that can be shared between sessions and use printer names that are compatible with prior versions of MetaFrame, then you're going to want to choose this create old style client printers. For printer properties retention, the, each user has the ability to make some modifications to the properties of their printer, and this actually gets to, allows us to select where those modifications are going to be stored. We can select whether they're going to be stored on the client device only, or whether they're retained in the user profile, or, or if they're going to be held in the profile only if they're not saved on the client for some reason. This is the, where we can select those options. For print job routing, under print job routing, this allows us to choose how we're going to route that print job from the client to the printer. If the network print driver is, is not across the WAN from the server, then we're going to want to choose this connect directly to the network print server. This is because we're going to need a direct path from our client to the network print server. 
If, however, we, we are on the other side of the WAN, in other words, if the client is on the far side of the WAN, but the server is close to the print server in the, on the local area network, then we are going to want to connect indirectly. This selects how that print job goes through the ICA channel to get to the eventually to the printer. Lastly, we can choose turn off client printer mapping. This says if we turn it off, this will allow our users to employ only network printers or printers connected directly to the server, not any client printers. Now these next two are pretty cool actually. We talked about the ability for you to, to, to limit the uh, users and their, their drivers coming in on their Citrix server. This native printer driver auto install policy allows us to say, you know what? Don't install those drivers. We don't want those drivers on those print servers. So the clients will not be able to install their locally connected printer drivers on the Citrix server. Now, that's, that's good and it's bad because you're not going to get driver bloat because of this, and you might not end up with some instabilities associated with it. But if a client has a printer that you don't have the driver for on your Citrix server, well, they're not going to be able to print to that server, except if you enable the universal driver. The universal driver is, 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 a, is a new feature that, which it's not a new feature, it's been around for a while, but it is a fantastic feature for kind of dealing with those, oops, I forgot to install the driver issues. If you've selected up here under native, native printer driver auto install to not automatically install the drivers, you can select to enable the universal driver and say, you know what, if the driver is unavailable, then use this universal driver. Now, what is the universal driver? It is a generic driver that was written by Citrix that is intended to work with nearly all printers out there. It may not have the same feature sets that the native driver may have, but at least it will allow you to, the, the user to print out some, the, 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 basically the, 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 the generic page of what they're looking to print out. It's a good way to fill in the gaps if you don't have those printer drivers available. Or if you really don't like printer driver bloat, you can select, you know what, I'm not going to deal with printer drivers at all. And my users may not have necessarily a need for, for extra added features that the printer may have available. In that case, we're just going to choose to use the universal driver only. By doing this, all printers all across will only use this universal driver. So those are the policies that are specific to printing. There's one last tool that we want to take a look at, and that's actually the concept of limiting bandwidth. I want to move back into the printer management node here and click on the bandwidth tab, and you'll see that for both CTX Nugget 1 and CTX Nugget 2, the bandwidth limit is set to unlimited. One of the issues you'll find that whenever you allow printing in your network is that the, the typical ICA traffic that goes from client to server is just the screen scrapes and the, the mouse movements and the keyboards. But when a user actually clicks print, that has to send a whole lot of data, essentially all the data that it takes to complete the print job from the client to the server. So you're no longer getting this sort of happy WAN friendly ICA traffic anymore. You're sending through this big bloop of data to go from your client to your server. And that can actually have a negative effect on your user's experience. If you have a lot of users that are printing and they're printing over a very small bandwidth, that can cause a, sl a slowing effect on the other user's sessions. So this bandwidth limit capability allows you to go in and say, okay, well, I'm going to limit the bandwidth to a certain number of kilobits per second. You know, I might throw in there, okay, no more than 25 kbps is going to be able to be used for this server when, you, when processing print jobs. Now, if you do this, you'll, you'll even out that, that bloomph from, as it goes through your, your, your latent network lines. But the other thing you'll find is that print jobs will take longer to complete. In some cases, if you set this down really low, it can take a really long time to complete the print job. So be aware of this. You'll want to tune this bandwidth so that you don't end up having this large amount of data piping through every time someone hits the print button, but you won't want to set it so low that anytime anyone hits print, they can go get a cup of coffee and run by the local bagel shop and come back and eat their lunch, and maybe by the time they get ready to leave for the evening, the print job's done. So be aware of this and tune this properly. I'm going to laugh in here at my sound effect, thinking about the, uh, the print job going bloomp through the ICA channel. It's kind of like when a snake eats a rat and the rat goes bloomp through the snake. 
Um, anyway, sorry for the bad joke, but you get the idea. Anyway, so what have we talked about here? We've talked about Citrix printing. We've talked about the different types of printing, whether that be local printing or client printing or network printing, and how those different types of printing can, can cause affect to your network. We talked about importing in network print servers and how we can make use of those network print servers inside of our Citrix infrastructure. We, we talked about the management of both drivers and printers and how you've actually got to be very careful how you manage those drivers and printers because different printing printers and different drivers from different operating systems can cause trouble in your Citrix farm. We talked about printing policies and how you can use policies to enhance the management of those drivers and printers. And we talked about the universal driver and how the universal driver can make it very easy for you to support printers that you may not necessarily know about when clients connect into your network. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.